materials you will need for a clay project are a clay board, which is a piece of wood covered in canvas. This is to absorb the water from the clay and to protect your work surface. You will also need a tool to cut the clay. This tool is a piece of fishing line tied to two wooden handles. You will also need a rolling pin, a wooden pottery rib, an assortment of different clay tools. These are some that can be found in the art room. A metal scraper and other items not specifically for use with clay such as a butter knife and a fork and a paint scraper. This can be used for scraping the clay off your board. I also have a container of slip, which is basically watered down clay. We use this for joining pieces of clay together. I have some wooden stamps for creating patterns and texture on the clay. I have a cup of water to add moisture to the clay, if needed, and I have a spinning clay wheel to make working on rounded projects easier. I will begin this project by cutting a piece of clay to work with using my clay cutter. I will then wrap the remaining clay in a Ziploc bag to prevent it from drying out. The very first thing I must do is to wedge the clay. I am doing this in order to remove any air bubbles from the clay and to ensure that it is of a consistent body. This means that the moisture in the clay is distributed evenly throughout it. I will use the palms of my hands to push downwards on the clay. Then I will use my fingers to pick it up again. I will push it down, pick it up, push it down, and pick it up in an attempt to create a kind of circle or spiral with my motions. Watching this motions from the side, you can almost see a spiral pattern being created. If your clay seems to be too dry, you may add water by putting water onto your canvas board and then wedging the clay on top of the water you have added. Adding water directly to the clay can result in too much water. Adding water to clay is similar to adding lotion or sunscreen to your skin. Your skin is able to absorb some lotion or sunscreen, but once you've added too much, all you are left with is a slimy mess. It is best to add a little water at a time and add it indirectly to the board instead of adding it directly to the clay body. Watching the process of wedging from above, you can see that my hands are creating a monkey face on the clay. This section of the video has been sped up to twice the speed of real time. But as you can see, you must wedge the clay for a long time in order to ensure you've removed all the air bubbles and maintain an even consistency. I will now cut the clay into thinner slabs in order to check for air bubbles. This is an optional stage for your project. However, I wanted to show how important wedging is. As you can see on this particular slab, there is a small air bubble present. And there's also a small air bubble present in this one. So I will continue to wedge in order to attempt to remove all air bubbles. Air bubbles are always present in clay. However, we can lessen their effect by creating project plans that do not have super thick or solid areas of clay. When air bubbles are fired, the air trapped inside the clay is heated to high temperatures and this causes the air to expand, breaking the clay that it was trapped inside of. This could mean that your project would break apart when fired and this is why we wedge. Now I will show you how to make a pinch plot. You will begin by wedging your clay. And then making it into a ball shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, just a roughly spherical shape. You will then take your thumb and push it into the clay roughly in the center of the ball. After you've made a small hole, you will continue to make it larger by using your fingers and thumb in a lobster claw type motion, pinching outwards and upwards. 
If you accidentally pinch all the way through the pot walls, no worries, you can repair that later with extra clay. And notice how my left hand is supporting the walls of the pot as I am pinching. You can control the size and shape of the pinch pot by flaring it out with your hands like this, or by making it taller by pinching it upwards. A pinch pot is a very versatile thing to make out of clay. It can become the basis of many projects. In this case, I will use it to start out a coil construction planter. I'm placing my pinch pot on my clay spinning wheel. This will make it easier for me to work. Right now my clay is very flexible and plastic, so joining the coils will not require scoring and slipping. I will create my coils by cutting several thin rectangular pieces of clay. I'm spreading my fingers apart and using them to roll my coils out into a roughly even width. If they're not super even, that's fine. You can even them out later as you are smoothing the coils out and joining them together. In order to make sure that the coils don't break apart when they dry, I will need to use a tool or my finger to blend the seam in between the two coils and make the two pieces of clay become one. However, if you like the look of the coils and you don't want to smooth the seam on the outside, you can just do it on the inside. I am doing it on both the outside and the inside. Once my clay begins to dry out, I will need to use a fork or a pin tool to score the clay in a crosshatch pattern and use my slip to join the coils together. Even though I am now scoring and slipping, I will still also need to use a tool or my finger to join the coils together on either the outside of the pot, the inside of the pot, or both.
Now that my planter is the height and size that I want it, I will begin smoothing it out using a scraping tool. I can also put my hand on the inside of the pot and use it to push outward and slightly flare out the shape of the pot. Also at the top of my pot, I have flared the shape somewhat inward by placing my coils on the inside edge of the previous coil. I want to give my planter the texture and pattern of a pineapple, so I have used a tool to incise a pattern onto my pot. When my pattern is sort of how I want it, I will use a paper towel to slightly smooth it out. I will not be able to work on it anymore when it is this plastic and moldable. I will have to wait until the clay dries a little bit more and becomes leather hard so that I can continue to make my pattern by carving the clay off. I will join my leaves to the top of the pot. I made these leaves by cutting their shape out of a slab. I am using slip and scoring to join them. Pieces like this are difficult and can be tricky during the drying process. So at the end, I will wrap them with paper towels in order to slow the drying and to avoid cracking. For your projects, keep in mind that it is difficult to make very thin gravity-defying things in clay. You will need to take extra care if you want to or think outside the box for how you will make it work. Once the clay has become leather hard, I can use a tool to carve off parts of the clay and even it out slightly and refine it. Once the clay is bone dry, I can sand it if I wish to have a smoother texture. And now I'm ready to glaze. In order to glaze your project, you will need it to be bone dry. You can glaze your piece if it's not dry yet, however, it makes the clay a little more difficult to handle when it's wet. I am using a Mako brand glaze in the color Dandelion for my first coat. I will also use a glaze with crystal pieces in it, layered on top, in order to give it a speckled texture. You need to use glaze specifically for ceramics. Glaze is different from paint. Please do not confuse the two in the art room, as they are clearly labeled as glaze. I like to apply glazes using a soft bristled watercolor brush, as it seems to leave less brush strokes behind. You may also want a container or palette to hold your glaze. You should not dip your brush directly into the glaze containers, as this could cause contamination. If you want your piece to be used for holding liquids or as a planter, you should glaze the inside. Do not glaze the bottom of your piece. Around two to three coats of glaze is good, depending on your desired effect. If you get glaze on a part of the piece where you didn't want it, you can use a wet paper towel or sponge to remove the glaze.
Here's the pineapple planter all ready to go into the kiln. The speckles on the glaze are the crystal glass pieces that will give it the speckled look when fired. This is the kiln. It is located in the construction room. As I was loading my pineapple into the kiln, something terrible happened. One of the leaves broke. I was able to repair it as it wasn't bisque fired yet. But my beautiful glaze job was slightly ruined in that area. Pieces breaking off and other mishaps like this can happen when working with ceramics. And into the kiln she goes. I've now unloaded the kiln after the firing process and here is the final product. My repair job on the leaf did hold up, but you can definitely still see where it broke. However, I think it's fine because this is all a part of making things by hand. We're not robots, so our work will always have these little imperfections. And that's it! Thanks for watching! <laughs>